Ezekiel chapter 41. Afterward, he brought me to the temple and measured the post. Temple's gone. Let me ask you, is this a figment of Ezekiel's imagination? There's the temple. Here's a guy measuring. Here's a door. Here's a gate. Here are windows. The visions of God to these prophets are not just a dream. The present temple is gone, burnt up, destroyed by the Babylonians, and Ezekiel is carried away, not only by place, not only is he carried from Babylon, where he was, into Jerusalem, but he's also carried into time. He has been transported into the future. So what's, ho what's Hollywood trying to do? They try to make movies of going back and forth through time. Something that God controls. And Ezekiel doing this by God doesn't mess up nothing in the future and doesn't mess up anything in the past. And yet here he is standing in front of the building and he changes nothing by his presence. And he doesn't bring anything back but the words of God. And measured the posts, six cubits broad on the one side, six cubits broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle. And the breadth of the door was ten cubits. The sides of the door were five cubits on the one side, and five cubits on the other, on the other side. And he measured the length thereof, forty cubits, and the breadth, twenty cubits. We then went he inward. And measured the post of the door, two cubits, and the door, six cubits, and the breadth of the door, seven cubits. And they measured the length thereof, twenty cubits, the breadth, twenty cubits, before the temple. And he said unto me, This is the most holy place. You see? This is the tabernacle that's formed after what Moses did in the, in the wilderness. This is the, this is the temple formed after Solomon. The holy place. This is a place where the veil was rent when Christ died for our sins. There's no more veil. There's a door. And he measured the wall of the house six cubits, and the breadth of every side chamber four cubits, round about the house on every side. So there's the chambers around the holy place, I would assume. I don't completely understand all this. And the side chambers were three. One over another, the thirty the, and thirty in order. They entered into the wall, which was of the house, the side chambers round about, that they might have hold. But they had not hold in the wall of the house. And there was an enlarging and a winding about still upward. To the side chambers for the winding about the house went still upward round about the house therefore the breadth of the house what is this winding you know exactly what this winding is it's a spiral staircase found in the Bible was still upward stairs that went up and so increased from the lowest chamber to the highest by the mist so in the midst of these chambers, here's a spiral sta staircase. And I saw also the height of the house round about. The foundations of the side chambers were a full reed of six great cubits. The thickness of the wall which was for the side chamber without was five cubits. And that which was left was the place of the side chambers that were within. Hopefully you can understand as I'm reading and between the chambers was the wideness of twenty cubits round about the house on every side. I see some kind of hallway, space. And the doors of the side chambers were toward the place that was left. One door toward the north and another door toward the south. And the breadth of that place that was left was five cubits round about. 
Now, the building that was before the separate place at the end toward the west was 70 cubits broad. And the wall of the building was seven and uh, five cubits thick. That is seven and a half feet thick. That is some wall. And the length thereof, 90 cubits. So he measured a house, 100 cubits long, the separate place, the building with the walls thereof, 100 cubits long. Also the breadth of the face of the house. And of the separate place toward the east, a hundred cubits. He measured the length of the building over against the separate place, which was behind it, and the galleries thereof on the one side, and on the other side, a hundred cubits, with the inner temple and porches of the court. A lot of buildings in this, in this temple. A lot of activity going on. The doorposts and the narrow windows which we spoke about last night, and the galleries round about on their three story. You remember something else that had three stories? In this case, you ever wonder if God just threw it in the Bible? Genesis 6.16? Noah's Ark had three stories. And then second. Chroni uh, Second Chronicles 12.2 and Amos 9.6. Over against the door, sealed with wood round about. That seal would be like a paneling, ceiling. And from the ground up to the windows, and the windows were covered. To that above the door, even unto the inner house, without. And by all the walls round about, within and without, by measure. It was made with cherubims. Those cherubims weren't worship, but there was a cherubim design with, if you haven't seen enough in Florida, palm trees. So that a palm tree was between a cherub and a, and a cherub. Every cherub had two faces, as most Christians do. So here is a, uh, a quote unquote, a wallpaper design in these buildings of a cherub and a palm tree so that the face of a man was toward the palm tree on the one side and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side no mention of an eagle or cow it was made through all the house round about so it would be, you get the Bible correct, something like a palm tree, man, lion, palm tree, man, lion, palm tree, man, lion, palm tree. Now, what on earth is God telling us there? I don't know, but there, there, God has put it in there for us to learn something that we don't know about. Someone will come across it one day. Why wasn't it the calf? Why wasn't it the eagle? You know somebody, according to the Advents, was a man and a lion? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Came as a baby the first time. He's come back as a lion the second time. Now what about the palm tree? I have no idea. Kind of weird, isn't it? From the ground un unto above the door were cherubim and palm trees made, and on the wall of the temple. The posts of the temple were squared, they weren't round. And the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of the one as the appearance of the other, they looked alike. The altar of wood was there, it was three cubits high, and the length thereof two cubits. And the corners therefore, and the length thereof, and the walls thereof, were of wood. And he said unto me, This is the table that is before the Lord. Uh, altar of wood, and it's a table. 
And if it's before the Lord, it's in the most holy place. In Moses, the only thing that was was the table of showbread, which had the, the, the bread, six and six, twelve for the, for the children of Israel. The only thing that was before the ark of the Lord, kind of, if you read Hebrews, something about that, that altar of, uh, of incense and the, the, the pot that held. But here... It's a table, and it's called an altar. It's not the brazen altar. Incense altar was golden. It was made of wood. It had gold. And the, the table of showbread of Moses was covered in gold. This one has no mention of gold. It's a table. It's called an altar. And the temple and the sanctuary had two doors. What happened to the veil? Wasn't there a veil? Didn't it split right down the middle, right between maybe these two doors? Where did Jesus say he was? He said, I am the veil. He said he was the door. <coughs> and the doors had two leaves apiece. Two turning leaves. Two leaves for the one door and two leaves for the other door. Anybody recognize that design? You ever see a Dutch door? Where you can, where it, let's just take one door. You can open it up the bottom and keep the top closed and hurt your head or you can open the top and keep the bottom closed and completely fall over it's a door that opens in two pieces and look if you don't know what I'm talking about look up on your internet a picture of a Dutch door that's exactly what it is and there's something to that why did God have this temple the doors break in two pieces Two doors. So you got four uh, pieces of a door, but two pieces of a door. See, this ain't just in here. See, you know, we're not reading about the birthday of Jesus. We're reading about a temple. And the question is, who's going to be, is it just the high priest is going to go into this place? And the priest, like the Old Testament? It's like the Old Testament. The only one that can walk into the holy place is the priest, and the only one that can walk into the most holy place. I don't read anything about a high priest. Jesus Christ is the high priest. And it's not a veil like it was the Old Testament. It's a door. You know, doors are a very interesting study in the Bible. And there were made on them, on the doors of the temple, what we just talked about, cherubims and palm trees, like as were made upon the walls. So something about this palm, man, lion, palm tree is all over the place. And there were thick planks upon the face of the porch without. And there were narrow windows, as we explained that last night, and palm trees on the one side and on the other side. So here's a window, all right? Think of yourself looking at a window, and when you look at a window, here's a palm tree on one side and a palm tree. What is it with these palm trees? You know, a coconut. In order to produce a coconut seed, must fall into the salty water and brime itself for a little while to produce. Palm trees are trees that are fibrous. They can withhold much storm. And on one side and another side, and the sides of the porch, and upon the side chambers of the house, and thick planks. 
So we're moving on in this temple. Not much I can say about this building. But like I said, if you can get me to draw it out or if you've got the ability to draw things, it'd be very interesting. Check it out on the internet. Look up uh, Ezekiel's temple when I've seen pictures. And artists, what they perceive what this is talking about. This is going to be a massive. And again, i got to ask, who built it? 